Are you ever really lost in this day and age? When I fly, I usually have my iPad with me, my iPhone in my pocket, both GPS enabled, a GPS unit installed in the cockpit, and maybe even a handheld GPS. That's four independent GPS systems. In addition, I have a transponder in ADS-B out, which can both broadcast my position to air traffic control, whom I could query for my position if I got lost. Still, it helps to know some tricks to find your position. Here we are flying VFR, albeit over a broken cloud layer with limited visual reference to the ground. We learn about the five C's for loss procedures. Circle, if we stay in one area, we only need to identify where we are once. Climb, we're already pretty high here. Communicate and confess, we could get ATC's help with a vector if they can spot us on radar. And comply with any instructions and conserve fuel. Let's explore ways we can find our position if lost using VORs. We'll need our sectional chart for this. We know we flew northbound over the Sydney VOR not too long ago. We'll want to know which radial off the Sydney VOR we're currently flying on. The VOR frequency is 115.9, so we put that into nav1 and flip it active. We'll want to go on VLOC mode to track the VOR, and we'll want to ID the station. Now we'll twist the OBS knob until the needle centers and the arrow gives us the from indication. This is the radial we're currently on about the 020 radial off of Sydney. Going onto our sectional, we draw a line from the VOR through the 020 point on the compass rose. We're somewhere on this line. If we knew how far we were from the station, we'd know exactly where on the line we are. But let's use a second VOR to pinpoint our location. The Scotts Bluff VOR is close by too. That's on 112.6. We'll put that on our nav too, Flip it active, switch to VLOC, and be sure to ID the station again. We'll twist this OBS knob until the needle centers with the from indication. This time we get about the 110 radial. So again, we draw that line on the chart. For any two straight lines that aren't parallel, there will be exactly one point of intersection. This is our location, and we find it as the town of Lisco. Let's do the same exercise, but instead of using radials, we'll use DME distance. The GPS will give us distances from VOR stations. I know, why not just use the GPS to pinpoint our position, right? We have distances from about 10 VOR stations listed out here. The first one is SNY, that's Sydney VOR again. We're showing about 30 miles from that. The trouble is that with the only distance information, we don't know a specific line from the station we might be on. This is 30 miles from the station, but we could be anywhere on this circle with that radius. We need more info. We're also about 46 miles from BFF. That was the Scotts Bluff VOR we used before. We now have a second circle of that radius, which we know we're on. Unlike the two straight lines before though, two circles can have two points of intersection. We're on either one or the other. We need a third circle to pinpoint our location. We'll use the Alliance VOR, AIA, which we're about 35 miles from. Here's that circle, and now we see a single point of intersection, again over the town of Lisco. When using distances like this, we need at least three points of comparison. This is called triangulation, and it's how old navigation systems like Loran used to work. And it's actually how GPS works, determining distances from satellites. Although instead of three, the bare minimum is four, because we're determining our point in three-dimensional space. Instead of circles, GPS uses intersecting spheres. Okay, so now we know where we are, what should we do? Let's divert to the nearest airport. Garden County is roughly southeast of here. This line on the map can be compared to the hash marks on the longitudinal line to estimate the distance at 15 miles. At 100 knots, that'll take us a bit more than six minutes to get to. We'll start our timer and look for a hole to punch through. We need to be careful to maintain VFR and not get too low to the ground by scud running. We do get below the layer and able to stay below it and stay at least 1,000 AGL. We find the airport, and it did indeed take us about six minutes to reach it. From here, we can assess options, land and take stock, or navigate elsewhere. Given the low ceilings and our dicey navigational situation, it might be best to land and try again later. If you love these videos, check out Flight Insight Online Ground Schools today at the link here and in the description.